Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on. And today we're going to be taking a look at Giga Wrecker Alt, which just came out for the Nintendo Switch. And though Giga Wrecker Alt was produced by Game Freak, which is known worldwide for its Pokemon games, this apple definitely fell pretty far from the tree. The story in Giga Wrecker Alt is one of a dystopian future where an unlikely underdog finds themselves in a world not of their own creating. And having been granted a new power, they finally find themselves in a position where they can do something about it. Accordingly, in Giga Wrecker Alt, we stumble upon our main character, Reika, who's pretty much just reflecting on the hopelessness of her own situation. The robotic apocalypse has dawned several years ago, and most everybody by this point in time has lost most everybody that they've loved. However, as random chance would have it, a girl around her similar age has stumbled upon her hiding place, but instead of them becoming fast friends, she announces her intentions to kill Reika in order to save the world. But this would-be assassin is quickly abducted by her robot overlords, and leaves Reika missing one of her arms as the mortally wounded victim of a botched assassination. And with likely only minutes left to live, she's then found by a hapless mad scientist, who offers her the chance to live, but at the price of doing some somewhat risky experimentation. And it's at this point that we actually start the game having our newly cybernetically augmented main character. Gameplay starts out with a bit of a walkthrough, allowing us to get accustomed to moving around, jumping, and manipulating our new cybernetic arm, which quickly becomes the mainstay of the game's mechanics. Whereas before Reika would have had to flee for her life at the sight of any robot, she can now use her augmented form to pound through any of the smaller ones, gaining their wreckage to use as an additional weapon against the larger. And though Reika's abilities do allow her to pummel enemies with these massive balls of scrap and even transform them into giant blades, these gaming elements are mostly geared toward manipulating environmental puzzles. Getting from room to room in this expansive overworld map will generally require you not only to confront minor enemies, but to use their scraps to manipulate puzzles. And whether that's done by transforming your collected wreckage into swords to slash at cables and supports, or by transforming it into blocks to use as counterweights, it quickly becomes apparent to the player that any enemies in a given room aren't really the objective, but more a means to an end to getting enough rubble to solve the puzzle. And this is only reinforced by the puzzle reset system, which resolves itself as a small pink light somewhere in the screen that not only resets the room's puzzle, but respawns all of the enemies. But while the bulk of the main gameplay doesn't really focus on combat as much, the boss fights are a complete 180. In total, there are seven boss fights in Giga Wrecker Alt that will not only challenge your combat skills, but challenge your familiarity with your newly augmented body. So just like in the bulk of the gameplay, entering a new room means you'll have to collect enough scraps to be able to damage your enemy. And regardless of whether it's in a puzzle situation or in a boss fight, generally the standard rule of the bigger the enemy, the more scrap still applies. But thanks to our benevolent mad scientist friend, Reika has been given ocular implants that allow her to know when an enemy can be damaged. Whether it's a boss or a random mob, should their aura glow red, your wreckage pile only has enough mass to probably push them back. However, once you've collected enough mass, their aura will turn blue, meaning you can generally crush them in one hit. Boss fights, though, will obviously take more than one hit, and with each successful hit, they'll speed up, change their attack patterns, or maybe even both. So figuring out how and when to collect rubble during a boss fight, as well as memorizing their attack patterns, really puts a lot of pressure on the player, but does definitely grant a sense of achievement when you finally manage to crush one. However, should boss fights be too tough, it might be about time to dive into the skill tree. Little blue orbs that you can gain from crushing enemies or rubble around you act as experience points, which when you've gained enough convert into a skill point. And these skill points can not only be spent to increase or enhance your abilities with your new cybernetic arm, allowing you to manipulate your weapons or rubble piles even more effectively, but they can also be spent on health and oh-so-needed regeneration. But regardless of all of the unique innovations combined into Giga Wrecker Alt, there are some things a player might want to be aware of. And first and foremost is most likely the combination of genres. Though this is a metroidvania, again, most of the game is a light puzzle platformer. So if you're diving into the game, especially based on the trailer footage, expecting some sort of a run-and-gun platformer with some all-out boss fights, the main staple gameplay may feel a little lacking. And conversely, if you're actually enjoying the environmental puzzle focus of the game, the boss fight's difficulty gap might seem way too wide. But regardless of what type of gamer you are and how you're trying to enjoy Giga Wrecker Alt, one thing that's definitely going to stand out is the feeling of the physics and general controls of the game. Being a physics or environmental puzzle-based platformer, you would expect both the physics and the jumping controls to be really tight. However, the physics generally seems somewhat unpredictable, and the jumping is definitely pretty floaty. And on more than one occasion, you might find yourself getting frustrated that even the slightest tap of any directional button is enough to launch you off of a cliff with the unpredictability of the movement. 
Another note of critique related to the puzzling is the puzzle reset system. It's a little pink light located somewhere on the screen that can easily be manipulated just by pressing the up directional button. However, as each of the environments is actually pretty small, sometimes this reset button is located directly in the middle of your platforming area. And on more than one occasion, you may find yourself trying to jump and press up or pressing up to attack an enemy above you and accidentally resetting the entire puzzle environment. So needless to say, not having some sort of confirmation button was a bit of an oversight. Overall, though, I'd have to say, despite the average storyline and graphics and audio package that really don't stand out too terribly much, Giga Wrecker Alt can still be a pretty fun game as long as you know what you're getting into. But given the obvious gap between the main gameplay styles and boss fights, as well as the huge difference in difficulty levels between the two, I found myself reflecting on Giga Wrecker Alt and feeling almost like the game had been designed by two different people with two different ideas of how it should be played. And while I know that is a lot of food for thought, that does about wrap up the review of Giga Wrecker Alt now on the Switch. So if you enjoyed the review or found it helpful, feel free to throw me a comment or a like to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be something new to find right here. But since I can only cover games Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if you want a heads up on which reviews might be coming out next, you can follow us on Twitter. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>